Hello everyone. I am Dr. Naveen Agrawal, Professor and Head, Department of ENT, Index Medical College Hospital and Research Center. Today, I will be teaching you the physiology of nose and paranasal sinus. It's a long presentation, so keep it tight. Okay. Outline. Nasal outline, that means nasal mucosal outline, it is lining of nose. Introduction, functions of nose, functions of paranasal sinuses and taste of the nasal frequency. We will be covering all of this. Lining of internal nose. It is lined by the skin at nasal vestibule olfactory epithelium and the respiratory mucosa. Respiratory mucosa means the pseudostratified squamous columnar ciliated epithelium. So there are three types of the linings of the internal nose. One is the skin, one is olfactory epithelium and one is respiratory mucosa that is ciliated columnar. You can see here this is the squamous mucosa at the vestibule. This is the olfactory mucosa and this is respiratory mucosa covering all over the inferior turbinate, middle turbinate, superior turbinate. Also, the nasopharyngeal area is covered with the same epithelium. The olfactory bulb, olfactory mucosa. Here we can see this is the squamous is lining the vestibule. This is the most common area for the nasal vestibule. Here is palate. Respiratory mucosa. Also, it is thickest over nasal concha. It contains pseudostratified ciliated columnar epithelium and contains plenty of copy. The submucosal layer contains the submucosal layer contains mucinous glands that secrete serous and mucus secretions for the surface plus blanket. The deeper specialized vascular plexus that is erectile tissue covering the turbinates consists of esterols capillaries, vascular sinusoids, venous plexuses, and venules. This is the microscopic picture of respiratory epithelia, which contains ciliated cells, goblet cells, and here is the submucosal layer. You can see the picture. Okay, next slide. This is the picture of submucosal layer which contains venous sinusoids, erectile properties, capacitance vessels, and congestion or decongestion properties are also having. Uh, in this submucosal layer. This is the respiratory mucosa, that is nasal mucosa. The goblet cells. Mucociliary transport. Mechanism by which nasal cavities clear itself of secretions and trap particles. As you can see in this figure, two faces of nasal airway mucosa are clear. One is gel phase and the second is sol. First is gel phase, second is sol phase, then basement membrane is there, cilia, some mucosal layer.
Okay. Now the next slide. Mucociliary mechanism. Mucus blanket consists of two layers, superficial mucosal layer and deep serous layer and floats on the cilia. And that is five, the speed is five to 10 mm per hour. Cilia base beats constantly, 10 to 20 times per second at room temperature, like a conveyor belt towards the nasal layer. Here you can see, this is the mucociliary trunk. These are the cilia. And mucus blanket is consisting of two layers, superficial mucosal and deep serous layer, all layer. Mucus, this is preciliary, ciliated cells, goblet cells which are secreting the mucus, and basal cell and basal membrane. As you can figure it out, the complete sheet of mucus blanket touches it into the nasopharynx in 10 to 20 minutes. This is like a conveyor belt mechanism. Because of that, this conveyor belt carrying this item towards the nasopharynx. Same in the nose, the conveyor belt of the mucus layer or sol layer and cilia is taking the trapped particles and mucus into the nasopharynx. Here you can see bacteria is of 0 0.02 to 10 micron and viruses is 0 0.07 to 10 viscous film. It is to going towards the pharynx. Thin fluid film, cilia, is the respiratory. You can see the clear difference in between the metaplasia, that is the disappearance of the cilia. And it is the healthy respiratory. It has the property of self cleaning. Mucociliary transport is directed towards determined structure, such as frontal sinus is draining into the frontal race and ultimately into the middle mid. It's more sinus is all, also draining into the middle mid. Middle meters, which is going into the coina. Sphenoid sinus via the sphenoethmoidal races going into the coina and ultimately reaching to the nasopharynx. Here you can see the structure of the nose along with the sinuses in which you can see Turbinates, inferior, middle, and superior turbinates, frontal sinuses, moid sinuses, nasal septum, and the mac. And in this diagram, you can clearly see the drainage of the maxillary sinus is against the river. Opposite to the contrary to the all other sinuses, that is frontal sinus, moid sinus, and sphenoid sinus, which drains. Towards the gravity, the maxillary sinus drains against the gravity, and that is why it is the most vulnerable sinus to get infected because of some obstruction that is bottleneck deformity or due to some infection in which ciliary dyskinesis. Here you can see so. This is the maxillary sinus and this is the maxillary sinus osteum, frontal sinus, ethmoid mandibula, and this is the detailed picture of the nasal clearance mechanism. Here you can see inferior meters, middle meters, and superior meters. This is the middle meters and this is the superior meters. But uh, here you can see in the diagram the pathway of normal mucosal drainage.
This is frontal sinus, sinoid sinus. Factors that can compromise the mucosillary function. Factors such as dry atmosphere, air pollutants, nasal irritants, infections, extremes of temperatures, or certain drugs such as anesthetic, sedative, sedatives, topical nasal decongestion, and beta blockers can compromise the mucosillary functions. Mucociliary dysfunction, defected cilia, immotile, merely inefficient or unsynchronous feet, primary ciliary dys dyskinesia, Cartagener syndrome or Young syndrome. Mucus vis viscosity is higher. That is seen in the cystic fibrosis or destroyed cilia because of the environmental exposure, radiotherapy. It is mostly secondary in nature, but Effective cilia or mucous viscosity, higher mucous viscosity are primary in nature, considered primary and it is usually associated with the congenital disorder. This is the picture of osteomatal complex. You can easily see what is the physiological and what is the pathological In physiological sinus, nose, there is a certain uh, gap and uh, it is draining the sinus fluid into the while in inflammation. If it blocks the meatus, then infection or drainage of fluids retains in the sinus and ultimately leading to the sinusitis and ultimate rhinitis. Now, what are the functions of nose? The nose contains organ of smell and respiration. It cleans and humidifies the inspired air, cools and removes the water from the expired. It also adds quality to speech product. The ENT surgeon should distinguish normal nasal function from pathological symptoms to prevent unnecessary surgery. Although the nose is a paired structure divided coronally into two chambers, it acts as a functional unit. So these are the different functions. First and foremost, it is the air conditioning or air conditioner system of the Body. It also aids in defense, that is filtration, mucociliary transport, and by bacteria killing. It aids in resonance of the voice, helps in breathing, olfaction, and also it may plays a major role in aesthetics of the face, as it is a three-dimensional. So, here are the different functions with the explanations and elaboration. Function. First is heat exchanger, the di direction of blood flow, latent heat evaporation and thermoregulation. Humidification, anterior serous glands, mixed serous and mucous glands, capillary permeability and other body fluids, example, tears. Filtration. Filtration of air flow pattern and the laminar or turbine. Nasal resistance can be anatomical, fixed, neurovascular, variable. Nasal fluids and ciliary function mainly depends on the mucus, mucins, protein including immunoglobulin, ciliary structure and function. Nasal neurovascular reflexes, parasympathetic, sympathetic, sensory, exome reflexes, sneezing, central pulmonary reflexes, nasal cycle. Voice modification because of the nasal
aspiration the nose acts as an air conditioning unit it performs humidification heat transfer and filtration the function of nose are bypasses the exercise the nose may be more important in temperature regulation than in respiration because of its ability to inspired gases contains pollutants domestic dust particles and cold industrial products bacteria viruses and tobacco breathing this figure shows breathing at rest inspired air once it has passed through the nasal wall divides into three air streams the main one flows along the middle turbine second and third flow along the ethmoid and the nasal fossa one is heat exchange. the first function is heat exchange temperature of the inspired air can vary from minus 50 to 50 degrees centigrade conduction convection and radiation conduction occurs without flow when heat is transferred by increased molecular movement a temperature gradient leads to convection currents this will affect air flow in the nose causing turbulence flow results in forced convection so this is some maths where fh is the heat flow plus in joules per meter per second tf is the bulk temperature and h is the heat transfer coefficient in joules per meter per second per degree c thermal signature of respiration in nostril region blood perfusion of nostrils inner lining tissue temperature gradient between inspiration and expiration phase and little heat transfer inside in the nasal convective heat transfer convective heat transfer inside nasal cavity in mucosal film radiation heat transfers into the nostrils Here is another match. Temperature control. The turbinates double the surface area of nasal mucosa. The large surface of nasal mucosa is structurally adapted. because of the highly vascular with cavernous venous stresses of sinusoids to regulate temperature of the inspired air the mucous membrane of middle and inferior turbinates and adjacent part of the septum controls the blood flow that regulates the size of the turbine this radiator mechanism warms up the inspired cold air which may be below 0 degree to near body temperature hot air is cooled to the body temperature this is the temperature control depicted by an diagram you can easily see how efficiently nose is working next is humidification vaporization cools the surface and 10% of the body heat is lost in this is the humidification inspiration saturation follows the temperature rise rapidly energy required for raising the temperature of inspired air latent heat of evaporation vaporization cools the surface and 10% of the body heat is lost in this way the amount of energy is dependent on ambient temperature and relative humidity of an inspired air 10% of body heat loss occurs through the nose in bronchus air in post nasal space is approximately 31 degrees centigrade and is 95% saturation saturated this is the inflow area 
capital C, and then functional area and outflow area. The temperature of the expired air at the back of the nose is slightly below body pore temperature and is saturated. Some water condenses into the mucosa as the temperature drops along the nose. The temperature in the anterior nose at the end of the expiration is 32 degrees centigrade and approximately 30 degrees centigrade at the end of the respiration. Approximately one third of the water required to humidify the inspired air is recovered in this way. People who breathe in through the nose and out through the mouth will dry. Out through the mouth will dry the. Filtration. Another function is filtration. Nasal vibrissae at the entrance of nose acts as a filter to sniff larger particles. The front of nose can filter particles up to three micron while Nasal mucus traps particles 0.5 to 3. Particles smaller than 0.5 micron seem to pass through the nose into lower airways without any difficulty. The nose does two jobs effectively that is, air cleaning and conditioning. The optimal filtering plus clearing and optimal conditioning, heating and hydration. This is the diagram showing nostril width through blood flow regulation. So you can clearly see the effect of nasal cycle on mucosal clearance. On your left side, increased blood flow and low air, that is optimal filtering clearance of particles and heating and humidification. A decreased blood flow and high air flow causes increased ventilation, heating or cooling humidification and dehumidity. Air flow. The air flow and the sensation of it are very different. Those receptors sense air flow. Most of the work of heat and mass transport has been performed in simple structure with constant cross set. Flow is turbulent but is considered laminar at rest. Cases flow faster through the coina. The characteristics of air flow were similar in different noses regardless of variety of various nasal shape. The cross-sectional flow is maximal at the center and is zero at the This is the diagram Bernoulli's principle, Venturi, or also known as the Venturi effect, high pressure and lower speed, while in the lower in the narrow area there is a low pressure and high speed. Bernoulli's equation is not strictly applicable since the energy overcoming the viscosity results in an irreversible drop in pressure. The nose has variable cross sections. The pressure and velocity will alter continuously within the system. Because of the flow is turbulent in an irregular tube, the resistance is inversely proportional to the square of the flow rate. Inspiration. Air flow is directed upwards and backwards from the nasal wall initially, mainly over the anterior part of the inferior turbine. It then splits into two below and over the middle turbinate, rejoining into posterior. Air reaches the other parts of the nose to a lesser degree. The velocity at the anterior wall is 12 to 18 meter per second during quiet respiration. Expiration lasts longer than the inspiration and is more turbulent. Extra pulmonary air flow is turbulent because of the direction changes, the caliber varies markedly and walls are not small. The surface area is enlarged by the turbinates and the microanatomy of the epithelium. This is the diagram going ventilation during expiration and inspiration. Here you also can see 
Negative pressure created in nasal cavity during inspiration sucks out air from paranasal sinuses via their ostium. And expiration ends within nasal cavity, create positive pressure, ventilates paranasal sinuses via their ostium. This is inspiration and expiration. You can see the here is the measure of velocity also. Anterior nasal wall, ostium internum or liminal chain. Formed by the lower edge of the upper lateral cartilage, the anterior end of the inferior turbinate and adjacent nasal septum. This is the narrowest part of the nose and is less well defined physiologically than anatomy. Narrowest part is equal to greater resistance that turns into the turbulent flow. Nasal resistance. Nose accounts for up to half of the total airway resistance. Resistance is comparatively more in infants. Resistance consists of mainly two components produced by the bone, cartilage, and the attached muscles and produced by the mucosa. Nasal resistance is high in infants who initially are obligatory nose breathing. It is high in infants. Adult breathe preferentially through the nose at rest even though there is a significant resistance. During expiration, the positive pressure is transmitted to the alveoli. Removal of this resistance by tracheostomy reduces the dead space but results in a degree of alveolar collapse. Reduced alveolar ventilation gives a degree of right to left shunting of the pulmonary. Engine changes in resistance to airflow along the nasal passage based on the results of the study of height and cold 1983. Here you can see the picture. So there is a nasal resistance which can be affected by certain factors. Some factors can increase and some factors can decrease the nasal resistance. Factors that decreases nasal resistance are exercise, sympathomimetics, rebreathing, atrophic rhinitis, and rate fall. While the factors that increase the nasal resistance are infective rhinitis, allergic rhinitis, vasomotor rhinitis, hyperventilation, supine posture, injection of the alcohol, aspirin, or sympathetic air antagonist, cold air. Next slide. Nasal cycle consists of alternate nasal blockade between the passages. First, physiologically described by the Kaiser in 1895. The changes are produced by vascular activity, particularly the volume of blood on the nose. Cyclical changes occur between 2 to 12 of them. They are constant for each. Here is the nasal cycle, cycle of congestion. At the time, only one nostril for breathing or respiration. Or, and another nose, nose is congested at the time. Tick top, tick top, in every two. The nasal cycle refers to spontaneous congestion and decongestion alternating between the two nasal passages. In this, we can see on the one side there is the decongested phase, and another is the uh, on the other side is the congested. The congested phase, there is the lot of lots of lot of blood is coming into the turbinates that is and and causing the mucosa nasal mucosa to get engorged with the blood. So thus causing the blocking of this other nostril while at the same time the other nostril is because of the less blood flow in the turbinates and the sinuses. The nasal decongestion and congestion cycle can be demonstrated in over 80% of them. Difficult to demonstrate in children and it present in 
cyclically. Nether secretions are also cyclic, cyclical with an increase in secretions in the head with the greatest Factors that modify the nasal cycles are allergy, infection, exercise, hormones, pregnancy, fear and emotions, and sexual. So here you can see the picture of the nasal valve area, vestibule, decongested head of the right. Inferior turbinate and congested head of the left inferior. Vagal overactivity may cause nasal congestion. High levels of CO2 in the spider produced by rebreathing may also reduce the nasal congestion. This reverse is following hyperventilation. Drugs which block the action of noradrenaline causes nasal congestion. Here you can see in this diagram. Decongested side and you. Next slide. Main physiological conditions influencing nasal cycle. First is age. Effect of the age, the nasal cycle changes with the age, probably due to the maturation of the autonomic nervous system. In neonates, most of the neonates show no significant fluctuations in the nasal patency. In children, shorter cycles than adults with regular pattern of of the nasal resistance. Adults classic pattern with reciprocal congestion, decongestion, alteration is the most frequent type reported. In elderly, alternating rhythmically associated with the nasal cycle decreases with age. Next is sleep. Nasal cycle and sleep stage are correlated. That means increase in cycle duration with a significant decrease in the rate of the reverse of nasal cycle. Most of the spontaneous changes occur during REM sleep, synchronization of the nose and sleep cycle. Posture. Lateral recumbency produces nasal cycle change. Changes of the nasal cycle may coincide with switches in posture from supine to lateral decubitus in some cases. Mucociliary clearance also having the effect over the nasal cycle has a marked effect on the mucociliary clearance of the Literature data are controversial on which side the mucociliary clearance is and exercises influence the nasal cycle. In the post-exercise period, it is commonly seen that spontaneous variations of the nasal cycle increase in amplitude. Olfactory perception, humidity, and estrogen are the other conditions in which there can be effect on the nasal cycle, such as in olfactory perception, nasal air for results in disparity of olfactory perception. Humidity may affect nasal cycle frequency in amplitude. Estrogen peak during ovulation is often accompanied by the nasal congestion, which alters normal nasal cycle. Next slide. Then, acute upper respiratory tract infections causes unilateral nasal congestion, usually increases with inflammation of the nasal mucosa. There is increase of the Amplitude of the reciprocal changes. Allergy. Allergy provocation generally increases the amplitude of the nasal cycle. Nasal septum deviation. There are no differences in terms of occurrence rate and mean duration of the nasal cycle. And obstructive sleep apnea syndrome. Water problem. Water comes from the serous glands, which are extensive throughout the During nasal cycle, Secretions are lower on the more obstructed side. Additional water comes from the expired air, the nasolacrimal bud, duct, and the oral cavity. Humidification is reduced by atropine, probably acting on the gland rather than the vasculature. Protection of the lower airway. 
the nose protects the lower airway by removing particles down to approximately 30 micro including the most pollen from the inspired air the shape and roughness of small particles may cause them to be deposited in inspired air travels through 180 degree and velocity drops markedly just after the nasal valve mainly by the mucociliary mechanism immunoglobulins and enzymes and sneezing mechanism This is the Elchen Blue and Ben Jensen uh, uh, Sorry, this is inferior conca showing the respiratory epithelium, lamina propria, propria capillaries, goblet cells, and cilia. Normal cyanonasal mucosa is made of an epithelial layer, lamina, propria, submucosa, and periosteum. The nasal epithelial cells are ciliated pseudostratified columnar cells with a variable number of goblet cells. Coarse nasal hairs, if you see located in nasal orifice, filter out large particles entering the nose. Particles smaller than 0.5 micrometer pass through the nasal filter to the lower air vessel. Turbulence increases deposition of particles. Particles in motion will tend to carry on in the same direction. Resistance to change in velocity is greater in irregular particles because of larger surface area and the number of facets. Vibrissi will only stop the large. Enzymes and immunoglobulins. Nasal secretions also contains an enzyme called neuramidase, that is lysozyme, which kills bacteria and virus. Immunoglobulins such as Ig and IgE and interferon are also present in nasal secretions and provide immunity against upper respiratory tract in immunoglobulin product, uh, protection, IgA and IgE are mainly present on the surface of the mucosa. IgM and IgG act if the mucosa is free. Certain bacterial allergens are neutralized, but several bacteria and viruses require the activation of cell mediated immune. The T and some B cells interact with macrophages, sorry, my, macrophages which have specific and non specific immunological. Dendritic cells are important in the allergic response. Two groups of cytokines act on CD4 plus T cell and give rise to two main responses, the Th1 and Th2. Local lymphatic systems, mucosal associated lymphoid tissue that is mild, bronchials and adenoids, and lymphoids. Nasal immune system, surface properties, mechanical, physical characteristics of mucosa. Innate immunity, bactericidal activity in the mucous proteins, lactopharynx, lysozymes, Alpha-2 microglobulin, C-reactive protein, complement system, cellular polymorphism, macrophage. Required immunity, surface IgA, IgM, IgE, <coughs> and IgG, primed microphage. Some mucous microphages, IgM, IgG, T and B lymphocytes. Then sites, adenoids, lymph nodes, and spleen. Next slide. Vocal resonance. The another function of nose is the vocal resonance. The note, no, nose aids quality by allowing some air to escape through it. Sound resonates within the nose and mouth. It too little air escapes from the nose than rhinorrhea. Clausa occurs if too much than rhinorrhea apertines. Exponenting nasal consonants M, N, N, G. Sound passes through the nasopharyngeal stomach and is, uh, is, and is emitted through the nose. The sinuses have no effect on body and voice. They may have some auditory feedback as transmission of sound through the skeleton helps monitor voice quality. Nasal secretions composed of two elements, mucus and water. Glycoprotein produced by mucus glands. Water and ions produced mainly from the serous glands and directly from transduction from the capillary network. 
Two secretary cell types, mucus and serous cell. Glycoprotein found in mucus are produced in the goblet cells within the epithelium and the glandular mucus cells. The mucosal glands are mixed and are arranged around ducts. The anterior part of the nose contains serous glands only in the vestibular region, produce a copious water secretion when stimulated. This is the diagram of ciliated cells, mucus transport, goblet cells, mucus production. This is the connective tissue. Proteins in nasal secretion. Lectoferrin. Mind divalent metal ions like transferrin in the circulation prevents growth of certain bacteria, particularly Staphylococcus and Pseudomonas in the nose. Lysozymes <clears throat> produced by the leukocytes and macrophages which are present in the nasal secretions and mucosa act only on bacteria without capsule. Antiproteases increases with the infection. Role is uncertain. Produced by leukocytes. Examples alpha antitrypsin, alpha 1 antichymotrypsin, and alpha 2 antiglobulin. All components have been identified. Functions the lysis of my, uh, microorganism enhancing neutrophil uh, function and leukotaxis. Lipids. Phospholipids and triglycerides are present. Exact function is ions in water, sodium and chloride are hyperosmolar in mucus. Evaporation and active ion transportation is responsible for the hyperosmolar. Immunoglobulins, all immunoglobulins are identified and IgA2 and Ig2 are mainly present. Now, cilia. Found on the surface of the cell is in, in the respiratory tract. Function is to propel mucus backward from nose to the nasopharynx. Nasal mucus film is in two layers. Upper the more, more layer is viscous, more upper Layer is more viscous, lower uh, layer is more watery, in which cilia can move freely. That is known as the solid. Beat frequency is between 7 and 16 hertz at body temperature. The beat consists of a rapid propulsive stroke and a slow recovery. During the propulsive phase, the cilium is straight and the tip points into the viscous layer of the mucous palanquin. Whereas in the recovery, the cilium is bent over in the aqueous layer. Energy is produced by conversion of ATP to ADP by the ATP of the dynein arms and the reaction is dependent on magnesium ions. Mucosillary transit time is measured by the saccharin test. The saccharin palate is placed in the anterior part of the nasal cavity, dissolved and is transported by the mucosillary system into the nasopharynx and then the oropharynx where the sweat test is detected. Normal transport times are less than 20 minutes with most subjects detecting the taste within 10 minutes. Other methods are also available. Nasal reflexes. Nose in and out with the various reflexes. These reflexes are aimed at protecting the lower airway from First is nasonasal reflex. This reflex is also known as the sneezing. This is purely a protective reflex aiming to protect the lower airway from the deleterious effects of substances mixed with the inspired air. This reflex is mediated by the trigeminal and vagal nerves. This reflex is caused by deep inspiration followed by forced expiration against closed throat. This is the reflex by the trigeminal nerve. Defense mechanism, this is the defense mechanism, airflow perception, then sneezing, cough, and inspiratory stop. Nasoocular reflex and nasobronchial reflex. These are the certain reflexes associated with the nose to provide immunity or protection to the 
Another is nasocardiac reflex. In this reflex, strength or stimulation of nasal mucosa causes bradycardia. And reduction in cardiac output and lowering of the blood pressure. Nasovascular reflex. In this reflex, stimulation of nasal mucosa causes peripheral vasoconstriction. Genitonasal reflex is in which sexual arousal or orgasm causes swelling of the nasal mucosa, especially the turbinate. Gastronasal reflex is strong gastric stimulation causes increased nasal respiration and condition of the nasal. Now the crutch reflex. Axillary pressure leads to unilateral and systemic changes in sympathetic reflexes. That is known as the crutch reflex. Five minutes of unilateral axillary pressure decrease the epsilateral minimum nasal cross-sectional area. The contralateral nasal minimum cross-sectional area was significantly increased, suggesting a contralateral increase in sympathetic vessel constriction. Now the olfaction. As you all know, the another major function of nose is olfaction, or it aids in the olfactory. Olfactory compound need higher water and liquid solubility. The solid in the mucus is presented to the sensory mucus. Olfactory area, it is around uh, 200 to 400 millimeters square with a density of approximately 5 into 104 receptor cells per millimeter square. Receptor cells have modified cilia with which increase surface area and project like normal cilia, cilia into the olfaction stimulus. Threshold and supra threshold adaptation, discrimination, and classification. Pathways neurons in contact with the external environment. Two neurons peripheral pathway, higher centers perceive smell. Trigeminal input pain, olfaction, and behavior are. This is the major pathway of the olfactory system. Here is the olfactory epithelium, then olfactory bulb, then olfactory tract, then primary olfactory network. It consists of anterior and olfactory nucleus, piriform cortex, amygdala, Entorhinal cortex, anterior perforated substance, then secondary or tertiary olfactory network, orbitofrontal cortex, anterior insula, mediodorsal thalamus, hypothalamus, parahippocampus, ventral pallidum, ventral striatum. Diagram of the olfactory neuroepithelium. You can see the olfactory epithelium, olfactory bulb. This is the basal cell, olfactory receptor neuron, dendrites, and cell. The protein cell along with the mucus. The stimulus, suppose there is a neuron which reacts with the bilayer of the specific sites, causes outflow of potassium and then cell depolarization. Receptor olfaction is mediated by G protein coupled receptors in the cells which interact with a specific adenyl cyclase within neuroepithelium. Adrenergic and muscarinic antagonists blocks some order. Threshold. Threshold concentration can vary by 1010 depending on the chemical nature of the stimuli. Threshold depends on the levels of inhibitory activity which is generated by higher centers. Orthonasal, retronasal. Air flows in relation to the ortho and retronasal olfactory function. Green arrow represents arrow air flow during orthonasal olfaction, while the blue arrow represents air flow during retronasal olfaction. Adaptation. 
olfactory responses show marked adaptation and threshold increase with exposure. Adaptation is a peripheral and central phenomena. Cross adaptation are present between odors and high concentration. Other factors affecting threshold that is changes in the nasal mucosa uh, and its pH. pH decreases the threshold and hormone sex hormone increases the threshold. Olfactory pathway smell is perceived in the olfactory region high up in the nasal cavity. Peripheral process of each olfactory cells reaches the mucosal surface and is cleaned into a ventricle with several, several cilia on it. Central processes are grouped into olfactory nerves, which pass through the cribriform plate of the ethmoid and end in the mitral cells of the olfactory bulb. Axons of mitral cells from olfactory tract and carry small to the smell to the pre pariform cortex and amygdaloid nucleus, where it reaches consciousness. This is the diagram. Olfactory functional te uh, function test, supra threshold test, only identifies odor. Smell bottles, smell identification test, threshold olfactrometry measures weakest perceptible odor with help of serial dilution manual and dynamic. That is also known as automatic. University of Pennsylvania smell identification test consists of four test booklets each containing 10 stimuli for us. All 40 stimuli are presented in rectangular areas. Subjects scratch and then sniff. They are required to pick one from five multiple choices present for each stimuli. This is the Pennsylvania test. This is 60 for 40 is considered as normal. 60 to 35 partial enosmia, 6 to 15 total enosmia, while 0 to 5 scoring is considered as malingering. Saccharin test. Evaluate salary function. Evaluate salary function by measuring time taken for a drop of saccharin to be tested in throat when applied to inferior turbinate. Normal speed is 5 to 10 mm per minute. Normal time is 10 to 20 minutes. The paranasal sinuses. The physiological of the paranasal sinuses is uncertain, first of all. These are the different sinuses, paranasal sinuses, that is, Ethmoid sinuses, maxillary sinus, frontal sinuses, and the phenoid sinus. In all the sinuses, mucosa mucus move towards the natural ostium. Maxillary sinus mucosillary clearance begins at the floor and flows against gravity towards the maxillary. The anterior ethmoids drain into the middle meters, and the posterior ethmoid cells drain into the superior meters. Mucus in the frontal sinus drains towards the ostium only from the mucal cells. This is the diagram which is showing the flow of the frontal sinuses as well as the maxillary sinus. You can see the picture. Okay, next. Now, what are the functions of the sinuses? It can be considered that functions of sinuses could be vocal resonance, diminution of the auditory feedback, air conditioning, reduction of skull weight, float, flotation of skull in weather, in water, sorry, mechanical rigidity, 
heat insulation and pressure damper. It is also a pressure damper. What we have seen the nasal swell body. Nasal swell body is a normal septal structure situated anteriorly to the middle turbinate, superiorly to the inferior turbinate at about 2.5 cm superior to the nasal swell. The proximity of the nasal swell body to the internal nasal wall, the histology with venous plates plead for a role in regulation of the nasal airflow, but the exact pathophysiologic role and effect on the nasal obstruction remain to be determined by the further. Every, uh, in every 20 to 30 minutes, swell bodies on one side of nasal cavity becomes engorged with blood, resulting in swelling of fungal mucosa and decrease in the air, which is directed to the other side of the nasal cavity. These periodic intervals of occlusion allows respiratory epithelium to recover from overchilling, overheating, overdrying. These are some pictures, and pictures of septal turbinate or inferior middle turbinate. Middle turbinate is smaller than the inferior turbinate. As for nasal patency, there are certain tests for the nasal patency that is such as water test, water test and cotton wool. This is the cold spatula test. Tongue depressor Cold tongue depressor or cold is kept in front of the anterior nasus and uh, fogging seen and compared for the nasal obstruction. Cotton wool fluff of cotton held against each nostril and movement are seen. This is the cotton test. Elevation of the nasal valvular fold relieves nasal obstruction, which is suggestive of DNS on that side, on that particular side. Thank you very much.